Scripture this morning is Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his we are his people, the sheep of the pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. The word of God for the people. So today we're going to begin a series of sermons on gratitude, which I'm sure you guys have probably already figured out that that's where we were heading um, this this Sunday. Um, but that does make sense, right, that we are going to be focusing on gratitude this time of year. As we begin to move to the end of the year, our next holiday before Christmas, of course, is coming up, right? And you guys all know what that one is. It's rifle season. I see some people shaking their heads. Yes, you are correct. It is rifle. No. Um, oh, sorry. I meant Thanksgiving, right? Thanksgiving is our next, is our next, and then Black Friday, sure. And then rifle season, uh, or our upcoming holidays. Uh, but Thanksgiving is supposed to be about more than just uh, eating until you pass out and then watching football, right? It's supposed to be more than just that. It's right there in the name of it, isn't Thanksgiving? It's all about giving thanks. And really what I think we could say is that giving thanks for anything in our life, it can be viewed as having gratitude for anything that is going on in our life. So just very quickly, I'll let you know, I, I am grateful to be back among you. I am grateful for the time away. Um, I am grateful that everything went well. And I am very grateful for Pastor Beth coming last week and filling in for me. It, it's wonderful to have someone like that in your life who's willing to help you out in, in those times like that. Now, gratitude and being thankful, they're, they're similar, but maybe a, a different as well. You could think of being thankful as being in the moment and gratitude as more of a way of life, right? Think of it this way. I am thankful for the food that I have to eat today, but I show gratitude for each day for having enough to eat. You see, gratitude is really about living each day with that sense of making sure that you are thankful for everything, everything in your life, every time, not just everything when it is going well and just the way that you want it to go, but everything that you know is part of your life. Uh, perhaps the greatest thing we gain from living a life full of gratitude is joy. Or maybe we have joy in our lives because we live with gratitude. It's kind of one of those, which came first, the chicken or the egg things. Are we joyful because we have gratitude or are we full of gratitude because we have joy? Well, either way. I believe that living a life full of both is exactly what God wants for, for us. Now, have you ever known someone in your life that seems to be full of joy and gratitude um, all the time? Uh, when I was in high school, I had a friend, and he always seemed to be full of joy. He was always smiling, always happy. He was one of those guys that could like walk into a room and smile, and it just like lit up the whole room whenever he walked in, right? Now, those of you that are of my generation, um, which falls somewhere between Gen X and Millennial, if you're putting those titles on them, you know that when we were in high school, it wasn't cool to be happy, right? Like, being happy wasn't the cool thing to be. Um, 
if you wanted to be cool at that time, you needed to be kind of like dark and brooding over everything all the time. Um, think of like Johnny Depp uh, before he was Captain Jack Sparrow, like that sort of person. Or if you're a little bit older, think of Marlon Brando, um, like dark and brooding all the time about things. And if you wanted to be cool, you needed to be like that. Either you needed to have a sense of you don't care about anything at all, or you're angry about something all the time. That is what our generation at that time thought was cool. So my friend that was always so joyful, sometimes people would look at him and say, what is wrong with you? Why are you always so happy? How can you be happy all the time? Look at all the things that are going on around you. You can't possibly think that it's all going to work out. Yeah, to his credit, there was nothing, and I mean nothing, that can bring him, could bring him down. Uh, he simply always chose to look at the good things in his life, and he was grateful for all that he had. And we're going to hear a little bit more about him next week. Um, his story is going to continue. And I, I must say, it seems like that has to be the best way to be able to live your life, to find joy and gratitude in small things and in big things whenever they happen. Now, next week, we're going to talk about what it means to have gratitude in our lives in everyday situations as Christians. But this week, we're going to focus on what it means to have gratitude in our lives as we enter into worship. Which brings us to our scripture for today, Psalm 100. And when you were listening to that psalm being read this morning, what was the first thing that stuck out to you? Did you hear it and think, well, that sounds really familiar. Well, you probably did, right? Um, because there are many praise songs that are based upon this psalm, right? We sang one this morning that is almost word for word, too. Yes, Delim is all over it today with their planning uh, for our songs this morning. Uh, or did you listen to it and think, oh, huh, well, I guess when we come into church, we should be making a loud and joyful noise. After all, it says that there, right? Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Well, you could do that if you came in. You could absolutely do that if you wanted to. But, you know, we as Methodists, we aren't real big on making noise, are we? We, we tend to be quiet and reserved in our services. And that's okay. Uh, but I think it is more about making sure that you're showing gratitude to the Lord whenever you are here or indeed anywhere. Except... It is more than that as well. See, in the case of our singing of our praises, it does ask for more than that. And I'm going to ask you all to participate a bit this morning. No, I'm not going to ask you to come up here and sing. That's not what we're going to do. But uh, I want you to grab your hymnal, your red hymnal, not your blue hymnal. So grab a hymnal quick. And I want you to open that hymnal to... Roman numeral number seven. So if you don't know, that's V-I-I. -I. I'll do the same with you. So Roman numeral V-I-I -I in our hymnal. The heading there is directions for singing. And I want you to look down to uh, Roman numeral number four. We're getting a crash course in Roman numerals this morning. Roman numeral number four, which is IV. And if you've never, uh, if you've never taken time to look at the hymnal other than just uh, the songs that we have in there, uh, there's all sorts of wonderful things in the hymnal. And this particular page is directions for singing given to us directly from John Wesley. So what John Wesley, uh, the founder of the Methodist Church, believes that we should do when singing. And so in uh, Roman numeral number four there, we have this direction, sing lustily with good courage. Now that word means a bit different to John Wesley than it does to us today. Um, but sing with good courage. Beware of singing as if you were half dead or half asleep. But lift up your voice with strength. Be no more afraid of your voice now, nor ashamed, more ashamed of it being heard than when you sung the songs of Satan. So how are we to sing? With lustily, right? With joy, with courage, right? 
It doesn't matter if you have the world's greatest voice or if you're a terrible singer. It doesn't matter. It is all a joyful noise in the ear of the Lord. And I'm, I'm not here to, that last line kind of pops out to us, right? Um, be no more afraid of your voice now or more ashamed of it being heard as when you sung the songs of Satan. Well, I, I'm not here to malign all other music that isn't Christian music. That's not what I want to focus on today. But I want you to think of it this way. You know when you're in the car all by yourself and you hear a song that comes on that you really like? And maybe, just maybe, you start to uh, sing that song uh, with all that you have at the top of your lungs. Maybe you do that, maybe you don't. Now, if you've ever seen me driving by and it looks like I'm talking to myself in the, in the truck, I'm probably singing. That's probably what I'm doing. And probably at the top of my lungs as well, depending on the song. Um, well, that is how we should be singing when it comes to giving our gratitude and song to God. See, I think that is what the psalmist meant when he was saying, make a joyful noise to the Lord. So we're going to try that here in a bit. So what else do we find in our scripture for today that tells us how we should be coming before God? Well, in verse 4, we are told, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Now, surely we are doing that, church, right? Every time we come in, surely that is what we're doing. I, I pray that it is. Uh, but sometimes when we enter into his gates, we're hurting, right? Sometimes when we enter into his gates, we have sadness in our lives. Well, when we enter with hurting and sadness, that is okay. And it can happen in tandem with also having praise and thanksgiving. You know, I've talked about it before, and I truly do believe this. God wants us to come to him in our times of sadness and in our times of hurting. But I also believe that you can do that and come to him in those times and still be filled with gratitude. Be filled with the gratitude that he is willing to hear you and he is willing to be with you. Maybe in those moments you can't manage joy, and that's okay. But you can manage gratitude in those moments. Now, other than those moments of sadness and hurting, we should be entering his gates with joy and gratitude, right? So when was the last time you came to church and you felt joy for being there? I sure hope it's today. Right? I hope that's the answer that it is today that you came feeling with joy. And, and uh, yeah, I hope it is. Uh, but the truth is that you sh we should be feeling this uh, not because I am telling you to feel it, not because of anything I say up here each week, but become at, because as you come into church, you are coming to praise God. That is why you are here. You are coming to show him your gratitude for all that he has done for you, and that should fill you with joy. Now, I think that we all, and myself included, we could stand to be reminded of that when we enter into his gates. You see, sometimes, especially those of us that have a, a job to do at church each week, uh, we get more caught up in doing our work than in praising God on a given Sunday. And we should be striving to make sure that we are putting that work on the back burner if we can, or at the very least, making sure we are doing what we have to do on a Sunday as an extension of our gratitude for him. You know, I'm not up here preaching every Sunday because um, I like to be up here talking. That's not what I'm doing, um, right? I'm here and doing this because it's an extension of my gratitude and my joy that I have for God, right? So as we do those things, let's make sure that we are coming to his gates with gratitude and joy. Let us take that with us as we go into the world. And we're going to talk more about that next week, how we can take that and go into the world. And finally, my challenge for you this week is this. When you come to church next week, and I know you're all going to come next week, right? Because you want to hear the continuing saga of my friend who was always smiling and happy, right? So you're going to want to hear the end of that next week. I want you to make sure that as you're entering into the church next week, you are entering with gratitude for all that God has done for you. Amen.